Hello, Roland the Thrill here once again, getting back to the Legend of Zelda Minimalist run. With Dungeon 4 out of the way, it's time to head on to level 5. So, let's just raft back across here, and follow the coastline. Hopefully we'll get some replacement bombs along the way. Also, It's a secret to everybody! But, pfft, cheapskate! Your brother's paid a lot more! So, stage 5 is a little bit of a trek from here. hoping some bombs get dropped. Oh, well, for now I'll be happy with the ferry anyway. Get around everybody. It's a secret to everybody! That's more like it. So now we need to go this way. Just ignore all the pea hats And it's time for something that's not really an enemy, more just an obstacle. Rocks. There's no killing them, unfortunately. Basically, you just have to try and dodge them. Oh, there's that waterfall. Anybody want to drop a heart, maybe? Apparently not. So what is in here, anyway? Yep, as I thought. If you pay her the middle amount, she'll tell you how to get to the fifth dungeon by saying to go up, 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 up the tall mountain. And here's the mountain in question. So, up we go. The screen will loop a few times. Until finally, a fourth attempt. And here we are. And thank you for the heart, I needed that. With that, we've reached Dungeon 5. So, a quick refreshing pause, and right back to it. And welcome to the fifth dungeon, the Lizard. This is another one where we're actually going to need the special item hidden here, so let's get right to work. First up, meet Paul's voice. Don't let their attempts to look like cute innocent bunny rabbits fool you. These things hurt a lot if they hit you, two hearts worth of damage per hit. Fortunately, they're severely allergic to arrows. Dig Dodger hates certain kind of sound. Cryptic as that may seem now, it's actually going to come in as very useful information later on. Coming up through here, we have a dark room, and another new enemy type, Gibdo. Gibdo is slow, but very durable. That's about the only thing it has going for it. And in a shooting gallery situation like this, it really doesn't matter too much. They can hurt you a lot if they walk into you, but as slow as they are, it's not really that big of a concern. These ones don't seem to want to cooperate, but they do seem to have a higher chance than most enemies of dropping bombs. And it's at least nice to know that you can have double digits worth of keys. Congratulations, it's the Dongo Triplets. If you layer the bombs on them like this, you can usually keep them stunned, so you can get kind of a profit of bombs going. Better than trying to predict what way they're going to move.
There we go. Dundala da dundala bonanza! Yeah, nothing really going on in here except for this map. This is a lizard? Good sir, I question your interior design skills. There's simple enough room here, just a few zoles to get rid of. And the wish that I could take that fairy with me for later. So here we have a bunch of Gibdos, one of which is very obviously carrying a bomb. Now we need to open up both sides of this room. But we do have a couple of spare bombs to play with anyway. Should have bombed that earlier. Oh well. I want to keep as many bombs as I possibly can because uh, I might need them in a bit. Things are about to get a lot harder. It is, quite unfortunately, time for Blue Dark Nuts. These things are worrisome even in a non-minimalist run. They take eight, uh, eight hits from the normal sword to kill. And they do two hearts worth of damage by walking into you. These are also the ones I was spamming in the third dungeon of my custom quest on Zelda Classic, so, uh... Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I really don't know what I was thinking at the time. I didn't get too far beyond making the third dungeon in that quest before my computer at the time died. And then when I got a new one, I had to switch operating systems, and at the time there just wasn't a good version of Zelda Classic for Windows. I don't know if that's changed by now. If it has, let me know if anybody knows for certain. It was a fun system to mess with. You could make all kinds of cool stuff in there. You could make custom graphics and uh, maps and everything. People were importing items from later Zelda games into it. Like, I know I saw things like the Bombos Medallion, Din's Fire, the Lens of Truth, the Hookshot. All kinds of cool stuff. It was pretty impressive what you could do with it. Very intuitive to use, too. But yeah, I just haven't really kept up with the Zelda Classic community, so I don't know what's going on with it these days. For those wondering, I'm not just driving myself batty for no reason. You do actually have to kill all these Dark Nuts to progress. In a room like this with a block concealing a hidden passage, the block will not move until all mortal enemies in the room are dealt with. Things like bubbles and traps don't count. Dark Nuts, unfortunately, do. But we have a lot of natural cover in this room, so it's not too bad. Especially once you start thinning out the herd a bit. There we go. With that, we have a secret passage. It'll take us to a part of the dungeon that we can't get to otherwise. It's a bit blocked off from everything else. Quite unfortunately, though, it leads to another room full of blue dark nuts. At least managed to get rid of one with the bombs. I still don't want to use too many bombs if I can help it, just due to what a limited resource they are. A bit less natural cover in this room. Makes things a little dicier. Okay, one more. Well, <laughs> I didn't mean to hit the button again. Let's just switch over to the arrows, just in case we accidentally hit that again. Actually, just to see if the candle helps out any in here. That would be a no. Okay. Just figured I'd check.
I could just get past these guys, they're pretty much the worst part of the dungeon. You'd think some of these should have died by now. Oh, come on. Stop turning at the most inopportune times, will you? Okay, we're slowly getting through this room. Suppose I can verify that I have been told that the way you kill Gliok in a swordless run is you kind of have to skip dungeons. You've got to go through that dungeon just long enough to get the stepladder, and then go to a later dungeon to get the magic wand, which, if you have the sword, you don't need. So in a swordless run, you're actually getting more items because you still end up needing the sword to beat Ganon. Plus, you have to take the magic wand. So, by picking up the sword, I'm actually doing more of a minimalist run. That kind of amuses me, actually. Okay, just one more of these pests to get rid of. There we go. So now we can push this block out of the way. And... We get the secret item of the dungeon, the Recorder. When played in the overworld, the Recorder will warp you between dungeon entrances as long as you've been to that dungeon. That can be pretty handy, but it's not the main reason we got it. It actually is needed to open one of the later dungeons in the first place. Also, it's needed to defeat the boss of this dungeon. I bet you'd like to have more bombs! Oh, you have no idea how much I'd love to have them. But unfortunately, as it's a minimalist run, I'm not allowed to have them. Sad face. Yeah, I didn't really need to go there, but uh, even in a minimalist run, there's still part of me that wants to be a bit of a completionist and try and at least show as much of the map as I can. I think paying the guy a hundred rupees lets you carry four more bombs, and I think there might be two instances of that. I'm not entirely certain, though. It's been so long since I've played the game, I actually forgot that you could even upgrade the bombs. I am going to go ahead and get rid of these Gibdos, just in case any of them happen to be carrying bombs. Bombs, bombs, bombs. After all, I'm down to my last bomb for now, so... I'd like to fix that if I could. They seem determined to be uncooperative. There we go. Thank you. So now we need to go out this way. That's why we had to bomb this wall, because that door doesn't open again. And what are you guys doing on this side of the gap? You're not supposed to be here. The Dodongos don't come back, do they? <sighs> they do, but luckily we don't have to defeat them again because the way we need to go is open. What kind of room are we dealing with here? Oh, the Twisty Tony room. And our reward is more gems, always lovely. Ah, 
I thought these guys carried a lot more bombs. Now, I know it's fairly certain in uh, Link to the Past that if you freeze them with the Ice Rod or uh, the Aether Medallion and then smash them with the hammer, you can usually get magic upgrades from them. So they're at least more certain in that game, I think. Hmm. Well, I can at least hide here from them. I think I found a nice vantage spot! <laughs> How convenient! Come on over here. <laughs> as much trouble as the blue ones gave me, I'll take what advantages they'll give me. Okay, moving on. Quick check of the map. Yeah, I think we're going the right way. Well, that's quite the assortment. Want to get rid of the pole's voice quickly. And I won't question getting rid of the keys as well. They're definitely the more annoying enemies we have here. The Gibdos are no problem. Always the final enemy! <laughs> Never fails! Because the nice thing is I don't think I have anything else I absolutely have to buy. So I don't have to worry too much about using arrows at this point. And there, we're maxed on bombs again. Bunny Stampede! Okay, it's boss time. And this would be Dig Dodger. Well, he does hate certain kinds of sound. Playing the recorder will make it to where you can actually finish Dig Dodger off. Before this point, I think he's actually invincible. He is a bit of a spaz at this point, though. Oh dear, and still hurts a lot. Can I set bombs as a trap for you? I actually don't remember. Yeah, you know what? Going down here. A room full of Gibdos, just in the hope that one drops a heart. A fairy would be all the more appreciated. Or you could just be stingy and drop nothing. Oh, that's not good. That's not good at all. And it restores you. Also, very not good. Don't suppose arrows work on you. Yes, they do. Okay. If they're going to give me a good hiding hole here, I'll use it. After all that trouble, I'd just as soon be done with this place. And thus, we are! Fifth piece of the Triforce get! And thankfully it restores our health. Almost forgot about that lever. One weird thing I want to show here before we're out. I think it's this one. Yeah. Secret passage under that Armos. And it just leads back into the dungeon, the same entrance. 
What do? So with that, we have finished the fifth dungeon. That was a bit of a thing. The difficulty is definitely ramping up, and I'm feeling the pain of staying at three hearts. But hey, we're making good progress. Better right than I thought I would, actually, because I've never tried a minimalist run of this game, so this is a first. But with that, that's where we're going to cut it for now. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the series so far, and I shall see you again next time. Until then, fare thee well. So yeah, I know this episode's already been pretty long, but bear with me. Before we exit out, just something I want to cover here. The subject of a couple of missed rooms. So, let's have a look at that. So one room I forgot is right here in dungeon number five. I should have known. Always check the eyes. In this case, you can bomb your way up from under it. Secret power is said to be in the arrow. Now, I'm not quite sure what he's referring to this time, unless maybe he's talking about that the silver arrow has some power in it that you need to defeat Ganon. That's the best I can guess. Also, just proof of concept. The heart containers do remain, so if for whatever reason you just want to get them later, you can. The other one that I supposedly missed was back here in the second dungeon, the moon. I was told there's a secret rupee room in the lower right-hand corner of the map. So, let's check it out. The thing is, it's not marked on the maps I've been following. Bomb does nothing, can't just push through the wall. You can do that in certain dungeons to get to secret rooms, but not here, anyway. But we'll try it from the other side, too, just to be certain. Can't push through. And can't bomb. So, yeah, this room just doesn't actually seem to be there. For the sake of thoroughness, I also checked the upper right corner and the lower left corner, and still no dice. So, yeah, I'm afraid this one just doesn't really seem to be there. And with that, I think that brings us to the close of this <laughs> rather long episode. Again, thank you for watching, hope you're enjoying, and I shall see you again next time. Until then, fare thee well.